So this is a picture of our method when it comes to reducing uh, nutrients in the Baltic Sea and thus reducing the eutroph eutrophication because eutrophication or what it really is, meaning too much algae that just blocks all the sunlight and takes up too much oxygen when they have died and need to be decomposed. That process takes up too much oxygen. And while it is too much algae, that's basically basically what the problem is. But uh, what is the causes of this problem then? Well, I have made some numbers here uh, so that you more easily could can follow my expl explanation and let's begin with the one here and here because uh, the nutrients and that cause eutroph eutrophication namely uh, nitrogen and phosphorus come from for example fertilizers from land that leak into the water and spread uh, this is called external load external load and these fertilizers could be for example be used in agriculture to make the make the crops grow faster which is the exact effect it has on algae as well but we don't want that effect on algae because if algae grows too much it just destroys everything uh, the second one the one here uh, under that one, it says internal load. So what is this internal load? Well, if external load is something that comes from outside the ocean into the ocean, internal load comes from the sea bottom. Uh, so when it get, uh, so when the oxygen concentration decreases, how uh, the sea bottom look and how it, it all fit together and so on. That is changed. Changed the chemical composition. Composition is changed. Changed, so that it releases more phosphorus. And as you remember, phosphorus was one of these nutrients that has caused eutrophication. However, the big problem with eutrophication and too much algae is that it blocks everything. And that it, as I have said, requires so much oxygen when in the decomposition, decomposition, decomposition problem process. Sorry, decomposition process. However, not all algae are bad. There are good algae, algae. Sorry. So how do you distinguish between bad and good algae? Because uh, the muscles that we plan to use, they won't distinguish. Well. The thing is that bad algae only use the nutrients phosphorus and nitrogen while good algae require or need silica as well and if it is much silica the only source of silica is our natural ones is not na is a natural one so we just have to worry about uh, so it can be assumed to be constant while uh, the concentration of phosphorus and nitrogen can be assumed to follow the extent of the external load. And that said, where it is much nitrogen and phosphorus, there are much bad algae, there are not much silica and good algae so those areas need treatment uh, while areas with uh, little phosphorus and nitrogen have more silica and more good algae so there is the plan is however to use mussels because mussels and other so-called bivalves bivalves uh, reduce nutrients naturally uh, however, uh, by incorporating the nutrients into into their shells, uh, and here 
this is gonna be blue mussels. Uh, they have much meat and much tissue that they can incorporate the nutrients into, but they are often harvested too soon since they are much valued in marketing and they are not res so resistant to harsh conditions. However, this hybrid, a hybrid between this one and another muscle that is called foolish mus muscle, uh, is much, much more resistant and it is not particular, particularly valuable. So we, it uh, can be placed in the water uh, longer without any losses. Uh, however, it needs to be financed from elsewhere and it there are not uh, quite as much tissue that uh, nutrients can be incorporated in. in. And just to be clear, uh, these muscles, they reduce nutrients through eating the algae. So they take away the algae, which is, which, which is what we want. Uh, anyway, the solution is to use both, uh, both types of muscles because both have pros and cons. No one is better than the other. We need both. Of course, uh, when you harvest algae, not all, uh, when you harvest, sorry, 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 my bad. When you harvest the mussels, not all algae is gonna uh, disappear. There will still be a, a tiny amount left, but hopefully this will do less damage. Uh, then some of the algae is gonna drop to the bottom uh, through for example feces uh, or poo uh, however this is not a problem uh, since if you look at the fives here in the first five uh, the nutrients drop to the bottom in the form of species in feces sorry but on the bottom there are creatures that has been that have been practically suffocating due to the uh, lack in oxygen and if the if with less algae the oxygen will hopefully uh, return and if they also get nutrients they get stronger they get more they survive this is good they don't they need oxygen it, the problem is that the creatures uh, at the surface gets too much and the creatures at the bottom gets too little. Otherwise, the nutrients can also be <laughs> buried in, in the ground. Uh, they can stay in the ground, but if you look at these six, there are also bacteria in the ground. And these bacteria... Uh, have the ability to change nutrients or in particular especially nitrogen into a form that algae can't use and then it is returned to the atmosphere as a part of the natural cycle of nitrogen. This was all, thank you for listening. I hope you learned something, otherwise there are is more explanations in the text under this and in the form of a text. So you, you can look at this again or you can read that. Thank you a lot.